all right everybody welcome back to a wonderful day at ranger auto not really but one can hope we've got an 06 silverado here came to me with a calm problem serial two communications error now i've already gone through diagnosed it and figured out which module was dead and i unplugged the module however when i plugged the module back in so that I could show you guys the problems I was having, it doesn't want to cooperate. So let me show you what we got here. And then I'll explain to you exactly what it was doing. And then I'll walk you through the process that I went through in order to figure out what was going on with it. All right. As you can see, we have a normal dashboard here, except for my check engine light didn't come on or anything like that. Well, what would happen is this dashboard would sit idle like this for about maybe 30, 45 seconds, and then you'd see the uh, battery gauge time out and all the gauges would fall. Then your, battery, your radio display would quit. You wouldn't get a Prindle light. See, we get a, a fully functional Prindle light now. Also, the ABS light would be on. Okay, so this truck uses serial two communications to run everything. So I went out here and I wasn't getting communications with the scan tool. So the first thing I did was I popped open my cover, went through my fuses here and uh, made sure that I had power on the lighter fuse, which is... Uh, that one right there, 15 amp lighter fuse sits right here on the box. I had powers and grounds, everything, except for I had a loose ground down by the radiator. There's a ground wire, it's a large ground wire. It goes off the negative terminal, down underneath, and it uh, connects to the uh, side of the radiator. Well, I loosened that up, rocked it back and forth, tightened it back up. Fuel gauge started working for a minute, and then it quit working again. So, then, I started looking at my wiring diagram, okay, and I'll show you the wiring diagram right here that uh, I used. I got all sorts of different little diagrams on here. So, I'll flip back to this one right here. This is the one I used. It's the uh, computer data lines. This number over here, splice pack 205. I'm going, what the hell is Splice Pack 205? Well, as it shows here, you got some terminals that go into this thing called the Splice Pack. It sits underneath the dashboard. After I located it and figured out what it was, then the next question is, how do you test it? Well, there's a lot of people, they can use a, a Tech 2, which is a GM factory scan tool. Tech 2, you go through it and... Uh, it does a procedure. So I went online. I downloaded the Tech 2 off of AC Delco. And I got a cord from Amazon. By the way, I'll never do that again. Well, the cord from Amazon wouldn't get recognized by the Tech 2 emulator that I downloaded off AC Delco. So then I got looking into it some more and some people use an oscilloscope. Well, I don't own an oscilloscope. Never needed one. Never planned on owning one because, well, why would you need one? Well, so I got thinking about it. These use voltages to communicate among each other through a thing called a comb, which I will show you in just a minute. So I thought, well, what if I hooked my multimeter, my 504, to this uh, splice pack and just got a, a base reading off of each terminal to see where they read in the communications range. And then if I find it uh, higher than normal reading, trace it back off my chart here, and that will be my dead or non-functioning module. So that's what I did. Well, see, the first thing I did was I tried to use a jumper wire and jumper it off using the multimeter in the OBD2 port off of port number two. That does not work, by the way. I am sorry to tell you, but if you try to do that, you are going to get false readings. 
you have to take it directly off the splice pack. So, without tearing the truck apart, let me show you. I would love to have uh, videoed this when I was doing it, but uh, I had my meter off. All right, so if you got one of these meters, it's, it's a multi-ranging, auto-ranging meter. You want to set it to DC volts, okay? All right, and then you want to go through your range. You want to hit your range button until you get, oh, about there is good enough. And what this does, it just takes out the noise because voltage carries noise. That's just how it works. All right, and then you get up under here. I had to take the fuse block out to get it to get enough room for me to reach it. But right up here, that's your uh, splice pack 205, at least in this truck. You take a screwdriver and you pry in on that end and you pop this clip out. And then inside, you got a bunch of little terminals in there. So let me do this real quick. Let me go ahead and take the comb out. And then I'll show you how I set up my scan or my multimeter. And I'll show you what comm signal looks like on a multimeter. Okay, I got my meter set up exactly how I had it. That's what the comb looks like. Some of them are double-sided. Some of them are single-sided. So if you do this job... And this only works on GMs. And you only have a singles comb. That's fine. Because that means less pins to probe. So. Turn the key on. Okay. You got to have it grounded. So I grounded it to the uh, bracket for the, the steering column. Or the uh, instrument panel. You turn your key on. And what this does. is This isolates all the uh, modules on this vehicle so that's what the inside of your comb looks like not a whole lot to do in it so let me get you set up where you can see the meter well actually we're going to turn the meter on and then i'm going to probe one and then show you what a comm signal looks like so first thing we need to do is we need to get our meter set back up so we got to hit our range button right down to there now, go up to your pin, which is going to sit right over here, and we're going to hit this uh, lower corner one right in here like that. And you see that? That's normal signal, okay? Yeah, see, that's normal signal, about 42 millivolts. And see, so you're going to have a pin that has zero on it. See, that's normal too. See, that's another signal that's good. And then, let me see if I can get this upper pin here. All right, let me see. I didn't get that one very well. Of course, you'll have one pin that gives you zero. That's your DLC connector. All right. Another good one right there. All right, so let me see if I can find the one that was, like, going all sorts of stupid on me here. And then I'll tell you which module it belongs to. I don't know, see, that one's running normal. Actually, you know, you see how it's climbing? See how it was climbing? Let's see if I can plug it back in. You can back probe these if you want to. You just uh, have to have that comb out because otherwise it uh, ties the network together. Let me see if I can get it to do it again. Anyhow, that one that was climbing belongs to the airbag module. The uh, M... Uh, I forget what they call it. I can tell you here in just a second. So anyway, I went through the modules. See, here we go. That's what it was doing. That's what my gauges were doing. They were timing out. And then my ding ding or my chime wouldn't function or it would function erratically. So then I flipped to my chart here and the SDM, okay? That's the wire 
in section H. It's blue and white. And I knew it was this one and not this one because this is a basic truck. However, if this truck did have memory seats in it, I would have uh, pulled the fuse for that module and see if it did the same thing. So anyway, I figured that out, okay? I got that all done. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on here? Because it was up around six volts. So it was on the other side of the dot. It was up around six volts. It was taking over the network. It was flooding the network with uh, communications. And so everything else was shutting off, okay? So just to make sure that I wasn't, you know, going down the wrong path, I came back out here to my fuse box. I put the comb back in. Came out here in my fuse box, pulled the airbag fuse, which is this 15 amp right up here, which is this fuse right over here, if you're looking at it from the fuse box. I pulled that fuse out, went inside, turned on the key. Hey, everything came back to life. All right. Well, that's only part of the diagnosis because, okay, yeah, we've got it nailed down to the airbag fuse. Great. Had to confirm it. So, I put the airbag fuse back in, located the SDM, which is the uh, sensing and diagnostics module for the airbag system. Lives under the seat. Kip the seat forward. Now, there is a TSB about this. If you live in, like, the uh, Rust Belt states, I'm going to call it, because it's not applicable to, like, the uh, southern states. But the northern states, like, from, oh, Indiana north, there's a TSB. Can you see what I see? That's the SDM. Smells like chlorine in here. So what has happened is, is that box had rotted out. That's the safety clip, because uh, I already had this unplugged once. But uh, anywho, you gotta push this tab down, slide that back. So we're gonna do a video on how to get this out. But I came down here, I reached in here, I undid the safeties on it, and I carefully pulled this box connector off. That's what it looks like. Look inside that box. You tell me why that thing's all jacked up. So I undid the connector on it, put the fuse back in, of course. And I came back over here, put my comb back in so that all my modules were talking. So. Let me get you a better look at this comb. Okay, don't mind the dirt on the outside. That's actually the adhesive off the tape. You see how that jumper lead works? That's how it works. If any time this thing got enough communications to where it actually, enough voltage where it would split that V right there, this thing would have no communications at all. And you'd have to get you another one of these uh, combs. They call them a comb because of what it looks like. See, if you put it like that, it looks like a comb. So then I put this back in this. Uh, an alignment tab on one side and nothing on the other. Well, if you look at the plug. I can show you the plug again with the uh, comb out of it. See, we got a notch on that side. And we got a notch on that side. The same spot. Goes in one way. I guess that's for a reason. And that snaps back in. This is taped up here. It's taped up here to the wiring that comes off the uh, instrument panel fuse box, in case you're wondering. So, yeah, that's how I found that. Usually when you're looking at comms on a, on a multimeter... You want to have it to where you get all the noise out. And that's why we have to range it. That way, because if you don't range it, everything looks the same. Okay, everything looks the same. And on this meter, it's got a built-in graph. You see this right here? That's your graph. So if you got this thing ranged out to about like that, 
when you're doing diagnostics using the meter you can watch that little little line move and if it's moving back and forth if it's moving back and forth then you're getting communication but if it's like way over here it's a short to ground and that means as far as data lines concerned you have a module pulling the system down which means all your stuff is not going to work so we got our comb plug back in We've done our diagnostic. We found out it was the airbag module. So then I come over here, turn on the key, everything works. The other thing, you know, I'll even start truck up so you can see the, see there's our gauges. There's our gauges. We didn't have gauges before, we've got gauges now. Look at that. I didn't have a Prindle. And the strangest thing of this was this thing was reading calm with the key off. It still does it. So I don't know if there's another problem in there or if it's just because we have a couple modules that are not communicating properly with the uh, PCM. We have to sync the different components. This is how I want you guys to view this, okay? On GM, everything you see, like the instrument panel, the HVAC controls, the radio, the headlight switch, the rear, the backlight switch. Each one of them is a different corresponding module within itself, except for the airbag module. Airbag module is separate. Everything here communicates to the body control module, which lives underneath your knee bolster. That module communicates to the PCM, which is under the hood. If you change anything in here, whether it's the dashboard instruments, the HVAC controls, the headlight switch even, all of it has to be synced to the PCM. If it's not, you could have starting problems, you could have drivability problems, you could have things acting strange. In this case, we have a truck that the odometer's not right. It's about 150,000 miles off of what the truck really has on it. So what we have to do, and I'll bring you along for it, is we have to get a Tech 2, which I am going to get one here shortly. We have to sync this up with the PCM, okay? We have to sync the airbag module up with the PCM and the body control module so that when this truck is driven, all the dash lights work, the odometer is correct. The airbag module works because until that happens, you're going to have an airbag light on all the time. So that's what we got left to do on this truck. And we'll see you next time.